Welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Today's quick tip is about jump rings. Many of the students that I get come from a beading background and they've reached a point where they're ready to learn soldering and fabrication. And this particular tip may seem basic, but a surprising number of beginners do one of the following two things. They either buy pre-made jump rings uh, because they are used to doing that because they were beaters and a lot of the uh, non-precious metal jump rings are pretty cheap or they buy an expensive jump ring making system which can cost upwards of $200. Um, I think that is one of those expenses that you could probably um, skip uh, because mostly uh, you can use basic tools to produce almost as good a quality jump rings for so much cheaper and save yourself a ton of money. So uh, the basics of making jump rings is what I want to talk about today. What you really need to do this is you need some cutters that cut flush on one side for wire cutters. I like these Zerons here. Uh, they cut uh, flush on this side and they leave a beveled cut on this side. Okay. Uh, you'll need a pair of needle nose or chain nose pliers. Uh, and when you're making jump rings, uh, you sometimes need different sizes. And so the easiest way to do that is keep a lot of cylindrical things of different sizes around your shop. Um, of course, you can use things like bail making pliers like this are great for making jump rings, but just as easy is to take a little brass rod or a pen or uh, one of these dapping punches, uh, all of which are different diameters and can produce different size jump rings. So um, to start with, let's just talk about using the, the bail making pliers. These come in all different sizes and I should probably get a couple more different sizes because they're really handy. Uh, but the easiest way to do it is just take your piece of wire uh, and you just basically do it like this and just keep spinning it up as you go. And it doesn't take very long at all before you have a, a spring like this. And then you can use your wire cutters and just snip off rings individually. Now, since it cuts flat on this side and I want to make the ring have as flat an end as I can, I'm going to start with that flat side towards the piece that's going to be uh, my ring there and I'm going to move in just so I'm cutting through one loop of the wire. Okay, Then because this cuts flat on this side over here, I'm going to flip it around here and cut into the next wire as close as I can to where I just cut Okay, and that will cut you a, a nice little jump ring like that. Okay. And they're split this way, so you can spread them open if you need to, to, to put them on something, and then you can close them back up again. Okay. Um, so that's, an e that's probably the easiest way. Uh, but if you need a different sized one, and you don't have a, a bell making pliers of the right diameter, um, just using a needle nose pliers and whatever uh, cylindrical object that you have, you can do the same thing. I just use the needle nose pliers to kind of hold the wire so I can get started. And then you can just wrap it around, whatever it is. And produce the same kind of thing. Okay. Again, when you're cutting through them, you want to you want to go past the part near the end here where it's not quite uh, circular there. And I'll snip that off. Okay. Whoops. I need to make sure that these are facing the correct direction. Like that. Okay. And then flip it over. Like that. And then we got a little bit bigger jump ring. Same deal for smaller ones or um, Let's just do that real quick here. Okay, and just like I did before on the bigger one, it doesn't even matter if they're nice and tightly tucked up next to each other. Uh, you can just, uh, even if they're spread out like that, you can still cut them off and straighten them out if they're a little bit crooked. So. Um, most of the jump ring making systems use a saw and you put a spring into a, a just like I'm making here, into a, a little uh, vise kind of thing and then you use the saw to cut through it. Um, but I find this to be pretty quick and efficient and those systems tend to cost about $200. So uh, finally, one of, the, one of the times that I use this most frequently is uh, for the tops of earrings, I usually have a little loop for the ear wire to go through. And for that I use 20 gauge wire like this and I use a piece of 14 gauge scrap that I have laying around and I'll do the same thing except this is going to be quite a bit smaller than what we've been doing before but they make great little hoops 
for the tops of your earrings for the ear wires to attach to. Okay, uh, and it makes a, a nice tiny little ring. And so they're super convenient to have one of these little springs laying around. You can just snip off however many rings you need at any given moment. All right, and just slide off. Same deal. Uh, get rid of the stuff that's not very straight at the end, and then you can start cutting into them one at a time and just snip them off. There is a little tiny bit of waste where you snip off, because I'm snipping off the, the beveled cut each time I do this. So I go in there, cut that, and then I've left a beveled cut here on the end. So I'm going to snip that off, flip it over, cut into the next one. Okay. I'll do it on one of the bigger loops here so you can see it better. So there's a beveled cut left from the last time I cut one off because this only cuts flat on one side. Snip that off, flip it over, and cut it. There you got it. Well, thanks for visiting my channel, and if you found this tip useful or enjoyable to watch, I'd love it if you'd like this video and share it with your friends who might also be interested, and subscribe to my channel for more useful tips like this. Thanks, and happy silversmithing.